Welcome to our new show, Extra Time, with me, Chris Brown. A show where we ask blues fans to talk about their favourite blues players. And this week I'm talking to Paul Collins, who's going to talk about... Trevor. The legend. Well, I think when you're a blues fan, you've only got to say TF, haven't you, really? And everybody knows who you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I guess similar to, like, Frank, who was another Birmingham City idol, icon and legend. But um, but I'm here today, I'm going to talk about Trevor, because he was my... My second football hero, the first one being Gordon Banks, and I can only assume it was that 1970 World Cup save from Pele. But going to St Andrews, being taken there by my dad, age six or seven in the early 70s, you know, it was always Trevor that, that caught me eye. And what I used to like to, to do is, is get in there early. I used to stand with my dad on the same step by the crash barrier on the cattle road. And I used to love to watch the players kick the ball about, you know, in warming up. And my eyes were always focused on Trevor. And I saw Trevor do things with the ball that I've never seen anybody else do. And then when I was a kid and I'd play football for, for my school or or for me, me Sunday league club. I always try, and all over the park with me friends, me mates, I always used to try and emulate Trevor and, and do what he did at St Andrews. Mm. Born 1954, right? Not in Birmingham. No, in Plymouth. In Plymouth. Yeah. But but, but as, as I was talking about Joe last week, um, another one regarded as one of our own and as a blue. Yeah, I think that, you know, when you look back or pros look back at the career you know I mean Trevor famously won the European Cup with Forest he went on to play for Man City and then went abroad to Italy he played for Sam Dore Atlanta and, and played for Rangers up there in Scotland and back at QPR I think Trevor will always look back fondly at his Birmingham City years because we we were the club where where Trevor really made his mark on the game and when he, he scored um you know, many, many a goal. In fact, his first goal at St Andrews, Big Ron was marking him. And he's, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bloody yeah. Hell. Big Ron had the pleasure of saying to me, I never give Trevor a kick that day, apart from one, and he put it in the back of the net. <laughs> How old was Ron then? He must have been getting on a bit. Well, I mean, Ron was a, a, a great player for uh, for Oxford United I think mm. him and his brother Graham I think Graham still holds a record amount of goals for Oxford no I think Big Ron probably holds a record amount of appearances and uh, took Oxford United from I think the Southern League back then almost to what's now uh, deemed the Premier League mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but um, but yeah I mean Trev again breaking on that scene um, wonder boy you know, what was it, four goals against Bolton? Yeah, 16, was it? Yeah, I think, he, I yeah. think he had to, after that, go and sweep the terraces after, cause, you know, he probably just about signed pro forms. Yeah. But, um, now, when he signed for uh, Forest, 79. Yeah, I think that was a good, heartbreaker, to be fair for me. Yeah. I mean, when I went to Kingshurst Comprehensive School, we didn't have um, uh, assemblies as such. But our only two I remember in school, um, the Silicon Chip, being one, and Trevor Francis being the first million pound uh, transfer, which broke the British record. Um, my opinion then, and my opinion is still the same today, Birmingham should never have sold Trevor and, and built a team around Francis. And I think that when you do sell your star players, you, you're only going to go one way. Having said that, Jim Smith, with the money... That, that Birmingham did receive from the sale of Trevor, yeah. spent it very, very wisely, and we brought in Frank Worthington, Colin Todd, and Archie Gemmell. Another idol of yours, here? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and I would say probably, you know, looking back at my time loving Birmingham City, the early 70s team were the team that you brought up loving. And, and I think, like, like anybody, you, you never forget your first love. But that Jim Smith team of, uh, of, of, the, of the early 80s, I would say today, still widely regarded as one of the best footballing teams that Birmingham City have ever had. 52 times uh, England capped. Yeah, again, I think there was lots of great players around in the 70s and uh, in those early 80s um, uh, periods. I can remember the buzzloads of, uh, uh, of fans going down when he, when he did his, uh, had his 
England debut as well. I remember that, yeah, yeah. Well, again, you know how, yeah, it gets, funny story here, actually, because when he made his England debut against Holland. Right, yeah. I think it, I think it was 77, Yeah, I think, and from memory. Because yeah. yeah. I haven't researched none of this. But my cousin was a chef in the D club. And I had, there was, I think I'm right in saying there was only two or three Birmingham City Subutio players on the top of Trevor <laughs> Francis' cake. Right. I had one of them. Oh, good. I mean, I, it didn't last very long. So you've still got it. No, no I yeah, haven't. Yeah, yeah. But but I do remember my cousin giving it to me and says, like, this was off Trevor Francis's cake that we, that we had baked for him at the D club. And... Uh, and as I say, I was a recipient of one of those Subutio players. I'm just going to go through some of the. Uh, I'm just going through some of the teams that he played for, and I, you know, he, he played. He had 26 appearances for Manchester City mm. and 12 goals. That's not a bad ratio, is it? Trev, to be to I be don't fair, remember I th- them much of that. Bad, that's that period. To be honest, I Manchester think if, I think if you look at Trev stats. You know they they would stack up to mm. to anybody. Pretty Did he good. score again? This is all off my rec, off okay. the top of my head. Did he scored 138 goals for Birmingham. He scored 119. I'm guessing that's league. So yeah, I think yeah, I think yeah, all in total, yeah, you know, we've heard a couple games yeah. as well. I think it was 138 yeah, yeah. goals that he yeah. scored for Blues. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah but this and yeah, appearances for Detroit Express, uh, 33 goals, 36. Really? Blimey! <laughs> I mean, that, I mean, tri- that's just, that is again, it. Tricky went over there and played in America, yeah. you know, in an age where all the great players, you got Cruyff over there, Beckenbauer, yeah. you know, the show that we were going to be doing with Alan Hudson, Uddy was over there. And that you was know. on loan? Yeah, it, it was because what they did in them days, the players went and played in the summer in, in America um, and then come back, I, I, I think... Frank one season missed the start of the Birmingham season because he was over there playing for uh, I think Philly at the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it was um, it was pretty lucrative to the players out there, and um, it was the North American Soccer League, and it, it was it, yeah, a yeah, yeah. very very. I mean, the great Pele was out there as well yeah. playing for New York Cosmos. Christ, at the Bobby time. Moore played went over as well. Yeah, then Bobby for... Harry took him over yeah. and played for Seattle. Seattle yeah. And then it was yeah. Bobby that um, when when Udi was at Stamford Bridge. It said um, yeah, Jimmy Gabriel's in in the next box. He's managing Seattle. He's looking for players, and and it was the Bobby Moore connection and, and Chelsea. That Alan Hudson, at the age of twenty seven, went mm. and left those shores and played uh, in America for Seattle Sounders. Of course, it's different now. It's oh, yeah, MSL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and then he went on to the uh, seventy appearances for Forest, twenty eight goals. That's still quite a good ratio as well. Again, you know, like what was his England stats? Ooh, get Trev's England stats up. Yeah, I'll get that up in a second. Um, Do you know he what he played? Been- uh, he scored twelve goals for England. Uh, 52 times yeah, not, bad. 12, not bad between 76 and 86 so. it must have been 76 then the yeah, debut yeah. not 77 I played at the 1982 I'll tell you Francis's greatest goal scoring stat was about 1976-77 through to about when I was about 14 because I used to roll my socks up every night and play football in my hallway. I, I, the, the carpet was threadbare by the time I got to about the age of 14. I think Trevor scored about 1,000 goals, surprisingly enough, all against Aston Villa yeah. in uh, down in Eileen Gardens when I was a baby. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, never had such a good time at uh, QPR. I oh, know it's Although he did score I, a hat-trick sco- against oh, the Villa when oh, he was no, made he did score 12 goals, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he did score 12 goals. Uh, didn't score a goal uh, for Rangers out of um, 18 appearances. So, Sampdoria didn't do too bad. 17 goals from 68. Mm. Yeah. And notoriously, bad. Italy was a very difficult place to uh, to score goals. Yeah. yeah back in those days. Yeah. It's so gone to his management career. Not the best. Not the best. He didn't do bad. It's Sheffield Wednesday. He did. He did take to Wembley a couple of times. Like. Yeah, I think he took over from Big Run, didn't he? Yeah. I think. Yeah. You know, pretty pretty much the the team was already there, and Trevor just took over. Yeah. The, um, the baton. I think the right. I remember the Wednesday fans. They did. They did quite take to him. Yeah, quite, I think I think football there, fans yeah. would take to anybody that yeah. gets you to Wembley, especially twice. Yeah. Uh, Quinn Smart Rangers, uh, not that good. I think he was there for, uh, I'm just looking at him, he wasn't there a very long season. Yeah, he was only there for a season. 
Yeah. I would four suggest. seasons at Sheffield Wednesday. Well, again, surprising. I would I would suggest like with Trevor because he never come across as having having the credentials that are needed off the pitch in management yeah. to the skills that he had on the pitch as a player, and mm. and I think a lot of times with great players they don't necessarily make great managers, and and I think one of those reasons the way I see it, is that depending on what your personality is. And, and I think I'm right in saying Glenn Hoddle was a, a similar ilk. When you're asking players to do things and they can't do the things that you used to do, it can be very, very frustrating if you're not that kind of compassionate yep. and, uh, manager and shown a little bit of humility. And, and I think that's probably one thing that Francis lacked. In fact, do you mean when Dev and Ors was in and, and Jeff was well, mm-hmm. both were saying mm-hmm. that, that when he was the manager of Birmingham City, Trevor was the best forward that we had. He was the best player that we had, and, yeah. and he'd say to Dev, like, he was showing us things, and we were pulling them down and, and smacking it eye wide and handsome, and Trevor would get it and he'd stick it in the top corner. Yeah. And Fra- Francis just was blessed with an, an, an abundance of skill in a footballing sense, but um, not particularly that great in a managerial no. capacity. It was always inevitable that one day he would return to Birmingham as, uh, as manager. Well, you see, again, the thing is, I mean, a lot of people say never go back. And, yep. and, and I think that, you know, the days of the Kumars, there was always like Trevor return and save us. And I think what football fans have to realise is that these are football people. They're not like godlike people or, or magicians. You know, they can only do what they can do. And you can only work with the tools that's available to you. And, um, you know, really and truthfully, you know, Trev probably done about as much as what he could, I think, mm. in a managerial role. But could he have done more as a player? I don't know. You, you look at his career, you look back, and he had a, a wonderful career. But, um, again, internationally, could he have got more than 50 caps? You look at some players that have got a hell of a lot more caps yep. than Trevor and certainly never had half of his ability. And then you look at the likes of Udi, he, he only received two England caps. I think Frank only had four or five, six England caps at, at most. And, and again, it's it's not down to that individual player why they didn't play more times for England. It's down to the idiots that manage the national team. Paul Collins, thank you for sharing your memories of the great Trevor Francis. Been a joy. And if you have a former player, blues player, that you'd like to chat about for 10, 15 minutes, get in touch with me, Chris Brown, either on Facebook Messenger or email me at talk at sports-radio.co.uk.